Greetings, ladies and mental gents, and welcome to today's Reddit quickie from the subreddit HFY. Called They Don't Know. Written by Uruwen. The link to the original will be down below. And as always, I hope that you enjoy. They don't know. They really don't know. The thought won't leave my brain as I lie here in my dorm bed. There is the sound of mildly concerned chatter outside my door. But I pay it no heed. I can't properly concentrate, or anything other than the distressing truth that I learned this evening. Growing up, I was always a little strange for a plural, the daredevil of my mild man at peer group. When I was invited to spend a year in an exchange student at an earth school, I immediately accepted. A death world. I naively crowded my friends. It would surely be an adventure worthy enough to prove my higher level of independence once and for all. I could barely contain my excitement on the long interstellar bus ride here. I was practically bouncing in my seat. So eager was I to prove that one of the little plovals could stand as an equal amongst humans. Then uh, I actually arrived here, and shortly thereafter things began to unravel. Everyday life became a struggle. Their world was full of smells, soaps, perfumes, deodorants, detergents, and more. They layered haphazardly on each person, clashing in ways that I couldn't even begin to describe to those back home. But it was when the humans gathered in mass that the true olfactory horror of this world began to show itself. Classrooms were bad enough, with the warring sense of sufficient to make me struggle to pay attention to the lessons. The hallways, though, were an absolute nightmare. Every step, whether it was my own or merely someone passing near me, brought my new barrage of odors to my nose. Their world was full of colors and noises, too. Advertising played on what seemed like every corner, yes, even with the skull itself, and it was actually carefully crafted to draw the less able eyes of the humans, though I had seen each local commercial hundreds of times by the end of my first week. If I was traveling alone, I still found myself trapped by its beckoning, flickering musical call. I was physically unable to turn away until I had watched the entirety of the short clip. Every. Single. Time. Between the unending sights and the unceasing smells, I was constantly late for my classes, and consistently distracted during them, until I made a few friends of my own, Greg, Philip, and Olivia. I owe them so much. Between the three of them, their courses overlapped all of mine, and they took me under their metaphorical wing to make sure that I could skirt around the dreadful distractions, beacons of advertising, or at least be led past them by a firm and helpful hand, and offered me devices to plug into my nose so that I could avoid the barrage of smells around me. Sure, they were strong enough that they could accidentally hurt me with the careless swing of the arm, but they always were cautious. Sure, they ate things during lunch that made me turn strange colors or caused me to have trouble breathing. But once we had identified what those things were, they took care to consume them elsewhere in the lunchroom. Sure, the campus was sprawling and I was exhausted after a day of trekking from classes to classes. But they were such caring people that they literally picked me up and carried me around so that I could in some small way participate in their excursions and parties. They took me to anything and everything, seemingly in search of discovering what I might like. Though I told them that I already knew what I enjoyed, they then claimed to be on the same quest themselves. And sadly, I confess now, that I never gave that admission the proper rate back then. They were... Ah, wonderful friends. I never really appreciated how terrifying they truly were until they invited me to come along to something called a... Uh, circus. This particular circus, they explained to me, showcased nothing but performing humans. Having seen what my untrained classmates could accomplish during gym class, I was excited, and more than a little curious, about the idea of seeing what humans could do with a little more practice. I naively thought that they put on shows like this to entertain the interstellar guests. As we queued up into the venue, I quickly noticed that the number of people in the crowd who clearly came from elsewhere, as I did comprised only about, to my guess, 10% of the attendance. The rest? They were all human. Perhaps the human trait was enjoying the success and abilities of the fellow humans. 
I remember being in the middle of contemplating that thought as my friends and I found our seats. Not long after that, the lights dimmed, the music started, and the show began. Try as I might, I cannot accurately describe the things that I saw, the things that I heard. The humans on the stage moved in ways that I couldn't even begin to fathom, bending and stretching in ways that made them seem boneless. They leaped and soared as though they had some secret means to negate the effects of gravity itself. They jumped and tumbled from platform to teammate to platform with the same calm, regular assurance as I did when I put one foot in front of another while walking. Their precision was incredible, their reach was true, and their stage presence was unfathomable. And all of this was perfectly said in a beautiful lilt of music. With every leap, with every throw, with every surprising twist of the body, I found myself joining the crowd with every reactionary gasp. The amazed gasps and productory human crowd, the sudden realization that the fact that managed to pull the party away from the mesmerizing spell taking place on the stage. With a great effort, I remember turning to Olivia, Grig, and Philip. A cold chill spilled down my spine as I saw upon their faces the same rapturous amazement I was feeling, though at the time I confess that I did not understand why. The reason only truly dawned on me afterwards, during a friendly chatter between the four friends as we headed back to the dorms. It was Philip who said the thing that once again caused the icy shiver to race down my back. Did you see that contortionist swivel her spine? I swear I didn't even know that was humanly possible. Was that meant as in a literal fashion? Surely not. I didn't want to believe it, but then snippets of conversation around me started echoing the same thing. How in the world do acrobats manage to leap? The knife juggler, that was how many knives? How? How did they do that? How? The words of the human speaking incredulity, praise and amazement seemed to grow until it was completely filled my ears to the exclusion of everything else. The roar of the conversation was matched by the shrieking of my rapidly growing fears. My stomach sank somewhere around my heels. After giving the three friends an admittedly brief and possibly offending goodbye, I hastened back to the sanctuary of my room. And now I lie here in bed, the implications of the words I heard echoing in my brain. As a plural, I know what I can do and cannot do. I know where my talents lie. I also have an innate sense of what my fellow provals can accomplish. I can be proud of one of my brethren, or be surprised that a particular friend showed a particular talent. But the extent of said talent will not throw me into confusion and wonder. Humans. Humans, it turned out, do not have innate senses of their capabilities. They have to reach out to the world around them trying anything and everything in a desperate and blind attempt to find out what they are good at. A human can potentially, possibly easily impress another to the point of amazement with a random skill. They literally don't know what they are capable of. My friends are kind, and I know that they are likely never deliberately harm me, but they don't know what they are capable of. They don't know. And then, my friends, is the end of this Reddit quickie. I hope that you enjoyed. If you'd like to support the channel or the author, all the stuff is down below. And as always, I hope that you guys have a good one, and I'll see you in the next story. Cheers.